Federal prosecutors announced charges Friday in a planned attack on a Somali immigrant community in Kansas. Authorities say three members of a right-wing militia were arrested in a plot to attack a mosque and housing complex in Garden City. We're told the attack was aimed specifically at targeting Somali refugees. Justice reporter Paula Reed has been following this from our Washington bureau. Uh, Paula, first question, what do we know at this point about the suspects? Tony, very disturbing details coming out of this case in Kansas. We know that the FBI opened a domestic terrorism investigation into these three back in February of this year. These three called themselves the Crusaders, and the militia group was anti-government, anti-immigrant, and anti-Muslim. They met regularly to discuss different ways to attack the Muslim community. And as you noted here, they are charged with attempting to blow up a housing complex that included a mosque and many, many Muslim residents. How did they even come to the attention of law enforcement in the first place? According to the court documents, a paid confidential human source. This person, he or she, attended several meetings with the Crusaders and was concerned about what they heard. So they reported it to the FBI but they continue to attend meetings. And this source reports in the court documents that these folks met as often as once a week, and they would even surveil their targets. They would go and conduct surveillance at spots where they knew there were lots of Somalis and lots of immigrants. In fact, in the court documents, the source reveals that while they'd be surveilling these targets, they would yell things at female Somalis who walked by. And Tony, these things are so graphic, I can't even quote them on television. What? But he would say that, you know, they frequently referred to Somalis as cockroaches and said several times that they needed to eliminate the Somalis. So this is coming from a paid confidential source. Confidential sources are common. There are many reasons why those sources cooperate with law enforcement, but being paid is one you don't often hear. Is that a problem as they move to prosecute this case? Well, I'm sure the defense attorneys might try to bring that up. It's actually the first time I've ever seen that descriptor in a complaint. You court don't get a lot of information about the confidential human source in the documents, particularly the initial ones. So we don't know too much about this person. All we know is this is someone who attended several meetings, was concerned, and went to the FBI and somehow received some sort of payment. Now, one of the men also had a domestic dispute with his significant other, and she also led authorities to a room in their residence where he was storing bomb-making materials. So they've certainly come to the attention of law enforcement in several ways, but it seems that this confidential human source is key, crucial, really, to this case. Now, domestic terrorism comes to mind when you hear a story like this one. Why are they not charged with domestic terrorism? I know a lot of people have that question. Since I broke this on Twitter, a lot of people have been tweeting at me. They're very upset. Uh, why have, they, have these people been charged with domestic terrorism? Well, Tony, there's no domestic terrorism law. It doesn't the way exist. The, wow. Exactly. The way the laws are written, it, it's, it's not very helpful for prosecutors. It's really geared towards foreign terrorism. So if you support a foreign terrorist organization, you're usually easily charged with terrorism. But for domestic groups, it's tricky. Because the Crusaders, if they just wanted to be anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, and anti-government, they could be. That doesn't label them a terrorist organization. But what they did is they plotted together to go out and, and commit violence using a weapon of mass destruction, which is a fancy way to say a bomb. So that's why they're charged with use of a weapon of mass destruction. It's just the way the laws are written. Why are they written that way? Well, because Congress wrote them and there was a lot of compromise and, and last-minute hand-wringing. Hand, uh, hand but also because there are certain civil liberties that they need to protect here in the United States. I know it's unsatisfying for a lot of people, but that answers your question as to why they're charged with conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction and not domestic terrorism. So this is a bigger picture kind of question here, but what is the bigger threat, according to the law enforcement uh, sources that you're in touch with, a bigger threat, ISIS, international terrorism, or domestic homegrown terror of the militia uh, variety? Just yesterday, I was with uh, one of the Department of Justice's top officials on domestic terrorism. We asked him this exact question, and as they always do, they refuse to answer. <laughs> Their stance is that both of them uh, propose a, a threat. Domestic terrorism has been around since the beginning uh, of this country. It's been a threat that has been consistent over time. Specifically, the threat from the Islamic State is, is new, but it is consistent and it is deadly, as we saw in Orlando and as we saw in San Bernardino. Anytime we try to press them on how many resources they're allocating to both threats, they say they're trying to, you know, advocate uh, for, for deterring threats on both, both fronts, but they refuse to say one is a greater threat than the other. All right, Paula Reed, our paid and uh, non-anonymous source in Washington and a great reporter. Uh, appreciate your work on this. Thank you very much.